All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the Ed Namrock Podcast. And today, I have my good friend, Devin Clark, on the podcast. Devin Clark, who's he? (laughs) Some dude, man. Some white boy? Some white boy from the 5-6 Deuce? From the 5-6 Deuce. For a lot of you who don't know who he is, he is a... Uh, European award-winning actor. If you can't get any more fucking B or C list, you're like that. Oh. I don't know what else. Yeah, look at this guy. This look motherfucker. This guy. Making me look good. Hell yeah. So what's Make, uh, what's the dealio, good. man? What's going on? Uh, happy Thursday. Uh, first of all, I just want to say, um, I want to say rest in peace to the late, great, Frank Vincent, um, didn't you know? Seeing him go was kind of sad. I grew up watching uh, all the mafia movies and Goodfellas, Casino. Hell of an actor, hell of a character actor, and uh, yeah, just wanted to give a quick uh, shout out to that guy. And, yeah, man, uh, that guy was pretty. Wherever he iconic. may be, he was he was dope. And he wasn't he was that dope. old, was he? No, no, he was. Uh, 70, 78. I mean, I mean, once you once you hit sixty, I think that's when you start getting the discounts at the movie theater, right? Uh, well, I know if you, it depends. If you go to Denny's, I think it's fifty five. <laughs> uh, who the hell who the hell goes to Denny's? <laughs> I'm a norms I'm a norms man myself. Oh shit! You let me you get the chef salad, them. please. I haven't been to Denny's since the one in Downey broke out in a giant brawl about ten years ago. Oh wow. Okay, yeah, it so na- it was nasty. For those of you listening, I met Devin about seven, roughly seven years ago, and I was selling karaoke machines over in the city of industry, mm. and through a mutual coworker, of course. I met Devin. Um, my first impression of Devin is, holy shit, he can karate chop beer cans. Empty ones. That was amazing. <laughs> well, they don't need to know that, do they? And then we seen you perform at uh, what's that place? We showed up late and we barely caught like, the last three songs. Um, is it De Piazza's? De Piazza's on PCH. Yeah, we went there. I think it's on PCH. Um, he's a great musician. For those of you listening, he plays the um, the banjo. He plays the um, the timpani. He plays bitches. You know what I'm saying? More, yeah, more, more so than most, most other things. <laughs> <laughs> Guitar, drums, bass. Those are the, those are the big three. So, but, let, uh, how, when? Um, let me ask you this: When did you get the? Um, I guess when did you get the the curiosity to get into um, get into acting? How did that happen? Because I didn't even know you actually did any acting at all when I first met you. I thought you were strictly a musician. Um, I was for many, many years. And when I got into my mid thirties, I just kind of saw the the music trends changing. I saw rock music pretty much dissipating, uh, before my very eyes. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the, you're, you know, we're, we're the same age. So we, we grew up in the early nineties when the grunge era was amazing and all pretty much even, even into like the mid nineties. Um, and then, you know, and I started, that's when I started like forming bands was in the early, the late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. And unfortunately by that time, uh, you know, rap metal and boy bands pretty much took over. So, <laughs> you know, I don't need to, I don't need to elaborate on that on that at all. I think that goes without saying. So, you know, and it just, I think music, rock music, especially has just declined over the last decade. And, you know, I, I, I was listening to KLOS today about an article that Eric Clapton wrote, um, who was a huge influence of mine because I'm a blues man. My guitar teacher was a blues man. Oh, yeah. And he was mentioning something about, you know, the guitar, the instrument, the guitar is, is just dying. Like nobody's buying them. Nobody's taking, I mean, it's not what it used to be. It's more, it's mainly keyboards now and people doing sampling of guitars on a key on a computer. So, you know, a lot of when I heard that, 
when I heard that, I, it kind of made me glad that I kind of put music on the back burner. I mean, I still perform. I still do acoustic uh, sets and whatnot. I'm kind of done with the band thing, um, you know. But I got into acting because I was working. I was working at a casino, and I met a girl that worked there, and we both were very artistic. We both clicked on an artistic level, and she kept mentioning to me about her acting coach. Now I always wanted to. I always wanted to pursue it, but I didn't know. I always thought that was an industry where you needed to know somebody, have a relative that's in the business, have a have a you know have an uncle that's a producer and all that shit. Or suck somebody's dick, right? Or or that, yes, yes. Look, and um, yeah, good old Hollyweird, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And um, so haven't gone down that that route. Thank God. You're like, I have but a second I heard, day, it's, I heard it's a thing. I heard it. I definitely hear it. I've heard many thing. stories. Even even my acting coach mentioned it. <laughs> so it's like you anyway. gotta suck someone's dick to get a hit in this in this business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm hoping that it's more so with the girls, but I don't oh, wow. know. I you know I just I don't know. Chomp on that but, shit. Anyway, in my short two-year career that I've been in this, fortunately, there hasn't been any of that. But I met a girl, long story short, we both clicked on an artistic level. She kept mentioning to me about her acting coach and that I should meet him. And I was like, ah, okay, well, it's just probably another guy that wants money and all that. And, and um, which nothing in Hollywood is free. Nothing. It's oh, just God, no. everything costs money. Uploading pictures to websites costs money. Uploading demo reels costs money. Acting coaches cost money. Headshots cost money. Getting premium getting, uh, memberships getting to IMDb, different websites. Getting IMDb Pro costs money. Everything costs money. So if you want to be an actor, please have a job. And if you can, make it as flexible a job as possible. Because, you know, I had to quit where I worked because that was a 40-hour-a-week job. And it's just Hollywood waits for no man. <laughs> so oh, if no. you're working, so if you get in an audition for a commercial for AT and T or whatever the hell, whatever whatever audition is, and you're spending you know the next day and a half trying to trying to switch with somebody at work, you know, get out of that job. Get do 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 Postmates. Do do any sort of app job that people do where you can make your own hours. You know, and that's the only thing that's kept me in the business. So, you know, that's. That's basically. I wanted to, I wanted to still be an artist, but I wanted to try a different, um, different angle. You know, I wanted to try a different part of my my artistic instrument. The other thing I wanted to talk about too is, um, okay, so a lot of people have been. Okay, this all started with the YouTube comment thing, and you were part of this. Um, yeah. We were kinda, watching. I'm kind of glad Con I was standing out of frame. Exactly. <laughs> we were watching the Conor McGregor because, and Floyd yeah. Mayweather fight. And I uploaded a reaction video for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. And it's us watching the fight. It's about an hour long video. But I'm like, okay, who's going to watch us, you know, react to a fight for an hour? Believe it or not, over 4,900 people. people did. <laughs> 4,900 people? It's close to 5,000 views now. Jesus. Yeah, I made a measly like. All we're doing is standing on the couch. On yeah. Really. Apparently, those video, those types of videos are big on YouTube. Like just people reacting to shit. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was this, of course, was one of the biggest you know sports uh, sure. spectacles that I've as has ever been seen. So you know it was it was a pretty high uh, search um, uh, result on YouTube at the time. Um, but the, what, what I'm trying to get at is a lot of people that were reading the comments, they were so fucking, uh, surprised. They're like, dude, why are black people so racist against Mexicans? Right. And I'm like, man, I'm the only thing, the only answer I can provide is like, I only know that to be out in the jail systems and the prison system, because that's just how it is. You have to roll with your own kind. Right. And, um, you know, if you're a South Sider, you got to go with the South Siders. And, you know, yeah. if you're if you're black, you got to go with the blacks. If you're white, you have to go with the Peckerwoods and stuff like that. 
peck of wood. Yeah, that's what they call them. And that's the only answer I can provide. I'm like, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. But, man, you read the comments, man. It's fucking brutal. Yeah. And it's it, because it we were cheering on the underdog. And because we were cheering on the underdog, we got, we got called uh beaners spicks white dick riders you mexicans are oh, worse yeah. than whites i'm these like are the kind of these are the kind of mexicans that voted for trump i'm like what that the one fuck? that one really made me laugh this is coming out of the blue man i'm like and i don't know i know they're trolling but still you can tell just by the way they spell and mm-hmm. the way you know i'm you know i'm from i'm from fucking i'm from the hood dude i know exactly when someone, you know, that's not, I guess, uh, sub, not suburban, um, and that's Educated. not, uh, yeah, that's not from the hood, mm-hmm. um, is is typing. I right. know these people. I grew up around them. I still work at an institution where so a lot of them spell the same way. They type the same mm-hmm. way. It's like I'm very familiar with the etymology of it too. So right. everyone's like, "Oh, well, how do you know they're black? I'm like, I do know they're black. Believe me, I know they're black. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of your brain and your hands are connected to the way you talk. And, sure. um, but then again, there was some uncle Tom's on those common threads, dude. You know, there yeah. was some Mexicans fucking talking shit about Mexicans. Oh well, yeah. That, that's yeah. That, that, that's another, that's another issue in the world too. <laughs> and that's like, <laughs> especially fuck, here man. in, LA. I mean, uh, yeah, like the whole, um, you know, Mexicans not liking Central Americans because they're just below them. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like a lot of that was, I don't know. A lot of it came, came into fruition as I, as I worked retail and I saw all that stuff later, later in Mm -hmm. my life. But yeah, but I don't know. And I, you read the comment thread. The one comment that really stood out to me was the Oh, you you Mexicans always want to see a black man lose. You're always trying to keep a black man down. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's just a fight. We were just fighting. We were just fighting for the underdog, dude. I mean, come on. It has nothing to do with race. Just like the comment I put on Facebook the other day had nothing to do with race. It's all about performance. It's all sports. Like you said, all sports is about performance. And when people bring the race card into it, man, that those are the racists. Those are the racist people. And your com- your comment wasn't even well. No, your post was simply a Colin Kaepernick meme, right? And then this snowflake, whoever she is, she commented right. saying, "Oh, it's because he's black that he's not on a fucking team." Right. Well, isn't he's not even really he's not one hundred percent African American. Last I checked, no, he just found out through a DNA test that yeah, he does have descendancy from Africa. But guess what? So do I. Yeah, I think <laughs> I yeah, got my dude, DNA were, test, and I'm five percent African Bantu. That would explain why you're what six four. No, I'm just kidding. I guess that's what <laughs> that's what my you know that's what my leg is long. You know what I'm saying? Man, I you know. I just did it's I just posted that based strictly on performance, man. And, you know, nobody hired him because of his, you know, 70 percent of the NFL is African-American. So the fact that she the fact that she said that he's not getting a job because he's black, that is absolutely ridiculous. And it just goes to show where people's minds are. And they're not they're not up on issues. Um, just like all those people on your YouTube feed aren't up on issues. No, it's it, that's like saying, that, oh yeah, they didn't want, uh, Tim Tebow on a team because he was Christian. I'm like, no, they didn't want that motherfucker no, on a team because he sucked. Well. Yeah, dude, he didn't perform well. He had that little spurt with Denver in the playoffs for like a minute. And then dude, after that, yeah, no, <laughs> he, the only time he really, his passing performance was not impressive. His running game may have been impressive, but you know, when you're a quarterback, you got to throw the ball. <laughs> yeah, and he he refused to to play another position because he felt that he was destined to play quarterback. And I'm just like, nah, dude, you got to go. Uh, as bad as bad badass as an athlete he is, he should have played another mm-hmm. position. But he wanted to play in baseball, which he's doing good at. So, yeah. Um, but fuck, no, man. I, he's a good kid, man. He's a good kid, and I want him. I, I, I dude, I wish that guy all the best, man. He's just a he's. He's a motivator. He motivates his teammates. 
he's he's just a good guy. You'll, I don't think you'll ever hear any dirt on him. I don't think you'll ever hear him doing pulling what John Jones pulled oh, or yeah. bringing a gun to a club or, or any of these other stupid things that athletes do. I, I don't see Tim Tebow doing any of those things. Yeah. And then, oh, here come the snowflakes. Well, what are you trying to say that Colin Kaepernick's not a good guy, huh, bro? What are you trying to say? I'm sure, you know what? I'm sure if I sat down and had a beer with him, he wouldn't be that bad of a guy. But you know what? I'm talking about performance here, man. I'm talking yeah. about performance and all the crazy bullshit that he, you know what? If you're an American, man, you, you need to stand for your country, okay? And the fact that he's pulling the oppression card I, i'm sorry did who, who's the one who signed the multi-million dollar contract to play in the nfl as a second part? string quarterback too yeah so how where's the oppression that you're talking about yeah you there know is and all and, all, and, <laughs> and, and, and the, you know and the girl on my facebook post i think she was born in the 90s what, what, what oppression you know I, I don't understand yeah you know at some point and at some point us as Americans as a society, we need to step back and and just quit bringing up race. I think we because it will never heal. If you keep bringing up race, you will if you keep you know we're never going to heal this as a society if we keep peeling off the the racial bandaid and bringing shit up like this. You yeah, know? you know who said it best was um was Morgan Freeman um in an interview with sixty minutes. I don't know if you've seen that before. No, but I'd love to because yeah, his voice is want, pretty dope. He doesn't want uh, Black History Month to even exist anymore, right? Because he feels like that promotes, you know. Well, it's it's been it's been commercialized and 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 just turned into something bigger than it really is. Oh yeah, by far. And yeah. I think for a fact that a lot of people take advantage of that instead of actually, you know sticking to the original objective of what it was supposed to be in the first place. Right. And that Everybody goes, should that be goes proud for of, anything, any yeah. type of, you know, celebration services, you know, government aid, right. You know, all that shit. People just want to milk it. People just want to take advantage of it. And people just want to be greedy and selfish. And guess what? That's just the nature of the beast. That's just who we are as people. And we do it to ourselves. My friend, my good friend Pete of about 25 years, he used to be a, a food server at TGI Fridays. And during the month of February, um, you, you had a lot of African-American people coming into the restaurant because it's February and they would, they would demand a discount because it's Black History Month. Wow. And he, it, demand no, a this discount. Is, true story. <laughs> true story, man. Man, I don't, I don't know. And then here, here's the, here's the two side, the two sided argument. Um, I'm not afraid to tell black people, like, hey, we were oppressed too. Shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And they get pissed because they're like, oh, it's another minority telling me to shut the fuck up when they don't know my struggle. And I'm right. like, motherfucker, you have no idea. Like I dealt with reverse racism because I was light skinned Mexican. Oh yeah. And I dealt with that. I was bullied. I was fucking Being cold well. shit. <laughs> yeah. It was like, you know, um, I can go on about this. I can write a book, but it's like, you should. I didn't cry wolf. I didn't play the victim card. I didn't do any of that shit. Mm -hmm. And I fucking got through with it. And I didn't, yeah. everyone's like, oh, you're light skinned, so they don't fuck with you as much. I'm like, no, that's not true at all. And it's like, to them, I look white. To white people, I look like, what the fuck are you? Right. And um, I know this because I have white friends, and they're like, well, we don't really see you as Mexican, and we don't really see you as white. And I'm like, well, what the fuck am I then? And they're like, well, we just see you as like a regular American dude. Ed, dude, you're Edgar. Yeah. Who gives a shit? And I'm like, okay, well, I'm one in the fucking, maybe, you know, maybe one in 10 people are like me, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but the majority is like, you know, straight brown, you know, straight white. Oh, look at Canelo. Yeah. <laughs> I bet he got some shit. That's probably why oh, he got into man. boxing. That's one guy I wanted to bring up because he looks Irish. He, yeah. looks, completely he looks more Irish. Irish than Connor. Yeah. <laughs> and does not speak a lick of English. He doesn't. Yeah. It's all Spanish. And um, 
but yeah, my, my point is, is like, okay, I remember getting into a heated argument with this one black guy I used to work with because he kept complaining about all the taco trucks that were surfacing around his area in South Central. Mm -hmm. he, he kept saying, I remember when there was like, you know, you know, chicken stands and all this other shit and all these motherfucking Mexicans are moving in with their carts and shit like that. And I'm like, so what's the problem? Yeah, you know, you eat it. He's like, yeah. And he tried to make it seem like he doesn't, he doesn't like Mexican food. I'm like, bullshit, dude. I go, I know, I know for a fact you like Mexican food because you always ask me for an order <laughs> whenever I go to fucking Keen Taco. Yeah. I'm like, so don't give me that bullshit. I go either A, you're just being a dick and hating. And I'm like, and what's there to hate on, dude? We're no threat, dude. Like, like I see a lot. The, they're one of the nicest cultures. Fuck, man. We're, we're the most giving. We're the most compassionate. Shit, we marry other races. We have biracial babies, man. Yeah. It's like, well, what? you know, at one point, at some point in the in the future, after we're gone, everybody's going to have a little bit of a color to them. Everybody's going to be kind of a brownish, yellowish oh, kind yeah. of color. Everybody's going to get blended into something. The and the population people is just need to get look different. used to it. Yeah. People just need to get used to it. It's, you know, even even in England, you know, you have all the old toffee nosed British people, you know, getting mad that there's immigration. Dude, immigration is a part of life and there's nothing nobody can do about it. So all this. What are you? What are you? Dude, that shit needs to get that shit needs to be left at the doorstep. Wow, that's crazy because, um, you know, we know that other countries also suffer from the same um the same prejudice and the same racism that we have here, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I have a friend that, uh, he's from here too. And he went to school over in, in London and, uh, he's Mexican. Um, and mm -hmm. they don't confuse you for Mexican in England. Apparently they confuse you for a Muslim. Sure. And that's yeah. like, he, he's like, what? I look Muslim. Like they don't mm -hmm. have very many Mexicans in, in London. No. No, I, like I don't think you, I ever saw one. It's crazy because if you're brown, you're automatically labeled as Muslim. Right. And it's like, yeah. fuck. Yeah, that's like, that's their Mexicans. <laughs> I know that sounds, I know that sounds kind of weird, but that's just, that, that's how it is, you know. But uh, I think as long as, if, 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 if people want to, if people want to migrate to a country, um, I'm all for that. But, you know, as long as people assimilate you know a lot of people especially in england um you'll have cities where it's just all muslims they all they all kind of annex themselves from the country that they were in and they come here and they all just kind of stay in their little pockets of the world and never leave kind of like never, Huntington park amen you hit the nail <laughs> yeah everybody just stays on pacific avenue Yep, and doesn't go anywhere and they never you know that's why you have Hispanic people that have lived here longer than I've been alive and they still don't speak proper English yeah because they don't they're in their little comfort bubble oh yeah definitely and uh, it's the and same some thing parts in of East LA are like that too yeah and it, that I think <sighs> that's kind of a problem for me oh that's you know? that's been a huge problem for me too because uh, when I worked retail uh, and this is just this is just the way I kind of attacked it, I guess you can say. Um, mm -hmm. There would be an, a line of customers just to speak to me and another representative right. to to buy new phones. And it's because we spoke Spanish. Right. Other reps didn't speak sure. Spanish, and they would lose out on sales. Right. The, the, the greed in yeah. me says, fuck you. You know, I know how to speak Spanish. You don't, so too fucking bad. Right. But to me, I would have to sit down with these people as I'm activating them um, and let them know, hey, how come you don't, how long have you been in this country for? And they would tell mm -hmm. me and they get mad. They're like, oh, no one speaks Spanish anymore, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, this isn't really the the, the primary language of this country. I'm like, you, you should learn English. Right. And they always, they answer with the same shit. What for? I don't need to. Where I'm at, yeah. I don't need to speak English, and I'm like, yeah, but don't you want to? Don't you want to like, you know, travel and 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 see things and and maybe, you know, 
to learn the ways of the country of which you're living in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the same thing with my mom. I mean, my mom speaks good enough English to communicate, but, you know, she gets her point across better in Spanish. Right. And when I uh, struggle to find a word that's very articulate, like it's out of the the norm of the vocabulary of a a normal Spanish conversation, she gets mad. She goes, just tell me in Spanish, just in regular. She says, she says, just tell me in regular Regular Spanish. Oh, <laughs> and right. I was trying to find, uh, I was trying to, f- uh, to say the word configure, uh, to mm-hmm. her. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. And it's like, I was, I'm like, oh fuck, how do you say it? I think it's configurar. And that's, to that, her, that sounds perfect. <laughs> configure to her. It's like, like fix it. Just say the word, fix it. Right. It's like, well, it's, I told her, I'm like, I'm trying to challenge myself in both languages because that's just how mm-hmm. I think. And I'm like, right. and then, you know, some, sometimes I jump the gun and I'm like, that's the problem with our, 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 our fucking rasa. I'm like, they don't want to learn both languages correctly. And she fucking, I mean, that's where I kind of struck it. So I'm good at striking nerves with my mom with that shit. Right. But, but at um, the same time, you, you, you know, you, I'm sure she, learn something from that well what's fucked up too is um i used to get ridiculed um in the neighborhood because i spoke i spoke english like i'm speaking it now right. and they're like oh how come you're talking like a white dude eh like what the fuck you think you're all bad and shit is or what and i'm like well what the fuck like i'm speaking english i don't know you can understand me they're like right. yeah but you you fucking sound like one of those white boys and shit like, how come okay. you can't talk like a Mexican? Is it? I'm like, you, could, you don't even fucking speak Spanish, so shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah. Like, you uh, invent yeah. words. Like, the whole Chicano slang thing, oh, God, it got on my nerves so much. But, mm-hmm. you know, I learned it because I can learn it. It was easy to learn, and I mastered it quickly. And they got mad right. at me because of that, too. It's you like can't it's, win. It's, I'm, not, well, I'm not, why are you blaming me for, for learning language that quickly? I'm right. like, you should blame yourself for being so ignorant and stupid for, for being jealous yeah. of it. Yeah. It's like, you're right. Edgar, you are, you are, a, you are a man amongst boys. Nah, I just pushed the broom, man. <laughs> I just pushed the broom. <laughs> it's but, mighty um, big. It's a mighty big broom. <laughs> no, nah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a trip because, um, like I have a, I have a kid brother now. He's a senior in high school. And his, yeah. oh God, his Spanish is so bad, man. Um, right. And my mom only speaks to him in Spanish. Right. And I told did, him. Did I'm I like, meet him? Yeah. He's the, did he I meet him? The big, he was the big tall kid that was sitting down on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the glasses. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I looked at him. I'm like, where did it go bad, man? Like, where did you right. forget? And he's like, well, it's because I game a lot online. Mm-hmm. And you know, all my friends speak English. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, but where does it get choppy with, with you know, with my mom? Like, we get it's in, it's almost impossible to forget how to speak Spanish around my mom because it's so fucking keen and fluent that it's like, okay, I I, I thank her for teaching me that first language because I know it, and mm. it's because of her. Mm. Um, right. So when I communicate with her, it, it's like a light switch. It instantly just clicks. And right. his light switch just doesn't click at all. Like he, yeah, yeah, it's so bad. I'm just like, fuck. Like, what happened, man? Like, uh, yeah. But okay, let me ask you this question. So, yeah. growing up with an English dad, you mm-hmm. never had the accent. No, I think because I was born here and I went to school here, um, and the fact that my mom is American, um, that that's pretty much why I don't have it. Wow. Um, that's intriguing because you fi- I would I would imagine that your dad would have more of a linguistic influence uh, on you because I don't know what's more powerful the the English or the American accent yeah um, I don't know I've met some British people that can do a really good American accent like probably better than my British accent um, it's just a question of <sighs> hearing it a lot i guess um and the fact that i heard my dad a lot that helped me i can do a british accent at the drop of a hat um i've even been cast in a british commercial they thought i was british i never let my guard down (laughs) so but i think because i went to school because my dad was at work most of the time you know growing up he was mainly 
family at work the whole time. I think if it was the other way around and my dad was around more when I was a kid, I think maybe I probably would have had it more. Right. Um, but because all my friends were American, I went to preschool and here I went to, you know, my whole schooling was here in LA. I think, uh, I think that's why. Yeah. Uh, that's funny as, um, talking about parent English parents, uh, and their children that were born, that are born here and in, in, mm-hmm. in the States, uh, look at the Osborne. Right. Um, you know, funny, we were we were actually talking about this earlier, uh, earlier today. Um, mm-hmm. If you listen to Kelly Osborne, she is 100 percent English. Right. And if you listen to Jack, he's 100 percent American. Yeah, it is if the it craziest fucking thing. Yeah. Um, where were they were, were they born? I'm assuming they were born and raised in England. I yeah, I think so. I think they were born there. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know the the entire story, but they were born there, and I think they they grew up over in the states like fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm like, okay, think, so how did Kelly's accent just stick, and Jack's kind of morphed into an American accent? That was just, that's just, and then you look at Sharon and Ozzy, their English accent never dissipated. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Yeah, I think Jack must have a lot of American friends when he was growing up. Or yeah. something, or, or and then maybe maybe Kelly spent more time with her with her mum. I'm not really sure. Yeah, and, uh, mom, to be honest, that's crazy. Honest with you, I didn't. I wasn't aware that Jack had more of an American accent than a than a than a British one. Yeah, I mean, he had a bit of a, you know, a little bit. Like it wasn't a lot, but I think it's because he's, you know, he grew up around, you know, Sharon and Ozzy. Right. Um, but that that's it's so crazy. Also, when I when I met. Um, I forgot who I met. She was, an, oh, it was Simon Sinek. You know who Simon Sinek is? Sounds familiar. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a pretty big author author, and he has some pretty some pretty badass books. So he's he's basically like the uh, inspirational guy, kind of like a Tony Robbins type of dude. Right. Um. But he's from Newcastle. Oh boy, that's 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 quite an accent. Yeah. No, listen to him now. It's completely gone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he, he like completely like I don't know if he just spent most of his time here, and well, mm-hmm. whatever the story is, but it's completely gone. But you can hear a little bit slip, just a little right. bit. Um, well, isn't Mel Gibson Australian? I think so too. Or, and then, or um, was that just a rumor? <laughs> I don't know. I, I got to look into that one. That's he's probably Mexican, dude. No oh, shit. He's from Guadalajara. Fucking a. Get he's the from green, Jalisco. But... You know, and what's his name? And then Charlie Hunnam uh, from Sons of Anarchy. Right. Um, when I would hear his dialogue during the show, I can hear his English accent slip totally. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. oh, shit. I wonder, like, uh, yeah, I wonder what happened to uh, the, the Jordy. Geordies are people from Newcastle. They call them Geordies. Wow. My, uh, my grandfather was a Geordie. Thomas Clark. Wow. That very is hard to un- very, under- totally very hard to understand him. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, he but, uh, um, last I checked, he's he did the uh, what's it called the King Arthur movie that uh, Guy Ritchie mm-hmm. directed. Wow, I didn't see it, so I don't know. So I, I, yeah. I have nothing. I'm to so do. bad. I'm so bad with TV and film. I'm too busy <laughs> trying. I'm too busy trying to get on it. Yeah, I'm the same well. way with um, with any of the uh, post sound and uh, even some of the music stuff. Like I just capture it mix of shit here you go dump it and then on to the next one it's like i don't share that equal amount of passion that i used to have when i was an artist Mm -hmm. now i'm just like okay i'll help you develop your product and just pay me yeah it's all about that just refer me to it's like it's at the end it's like good fellas fuck you pay me exactly That's that's what it's all about my friend yep um well i'm we're running out of time here so i wanted to do a, a quick um uh, not a Q and A, but like, what's your favorite? And you know, the do's and don'ts of Devin Clark. Um, okay. Uh, right off the bat, right at the top of your head, um, what is your one, uh, all time favorite film that you can watch once a day, mm-hmm. every day, Monday through Sunday? Good fellas. Really? Why? Yep. Just uh, as long as it's not on TNT. Because then it's like four hours long, and that takes up your whole day. But I can watch that movie. Say you had a Blu-ray <clears throat> or a digital copy, whatever. 
Yeah, it would definitely it would still be Goodfellas. What what is it about Goodfellas that just really captivates just you? The, what is the it that story, grabs you about the, it? The acting, the cut words, everything. Just it just it never gets old. You can quote you can quote the shit at, at school or with your employees. You just it's just one of those movies that never gets old, man. Yeah. I I've I see it in partitions. I never seen it straight through, you know that? You gotta do it. I seen it in partitions and I still one think of these days even you in partitions, do it. it's a great fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant, man. Yeah. All right. Uh number two would be okay if all right, same, same concept, but only with a a, a music album. There was mm. one album you can listen to once a day, every day. Dark with, Side of the Moon. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. It's like, like one. Gi- it's like one. Person. It's like one giant long song. Wow. Just everything flows into the next song, and it's just it's magical, man. The meaning behind the the album, everything. Wow. So it's, okay. it's a brilliant album. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. What's one thing in the kitchen food wise that you can never not have? You can't live with it. You always have to have it either in your fridge, in you your ready? pantry. You ready for this? I'm ready. You're going to like this. This is the Mexican in me. Tapatio. Yep. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I go into households and they don't have it. They have like some other shit. It's like what? Like if they have Cholula, okay, cool. Cholula's cool. Yeah. It's got the little wooden cork on top. Yucateca is good. Yes, that's another but one. The, but it's a small bottle. They need to make a bigger bottle. Oh, that shit's hot really? as fuck. That's why it is. It's beautiful. Yeah. If the, you can get the, the if you can get their orange one, one fuck, man. yeah. If you can get the orange habanero one, I think they sell it at uh, Northgate. Yes. If you're lucky, if it's not sold out. That's the shit. I think that's the one that they sell the most. That's why you can't really find it anywhere. Yeah. Because the, the, the green one and then the red one, you can find just about anywhere. Yep. But, um, okay, last one. Yeah. If, damn, okay, this, the, this could go either way. But if you were a homosexual, which mm-hmm. you're not, who mm-hmm. would be the one man on this earth that you would do homosexual things with? Ooh. Um, geez, Louise. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> I always stump people with this question. Peter North? Wow. Peter <laughs> North. This guy's a legend, man. Peter North. The 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 cum master dude. The load man cometh. This dude, oh man, I remember. Are we you, are we you, are we live? Is this recording? No, we're gonna edit this out. But <laughs> oh Jesus! No, you know what's funny about Peter North? I remember back um, at at his peak of at the peak of his career, he was on Love Line on K Rock. Oh yeah. And um, he sh- he shared a secret as to how he he's able to do that, and the guy does not masturbate. Yeah. That's a secret. Does not touch you know himself what, man? at all. It's it's it's, so, it's easier easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, and he guess, gets I mad when girls touch. Like he, does. he gets mad when girls would touch his hair during during scenes. Oh yeah, you can't mess with the pompadour. <laughs> you can't do that. that that's like, that's, oh, a, that's a cardinal shit. sin. Yeah, because that's part of his image. It's like, oh, what the fuck? Yep. Yeah, that's crazy, yep. man. That and he started out his career as Matt Ramsey. So if I were gay, <laughs> at least I would know that he knew how to fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. That's great. Edgar, dude. my man. Dude. All right. Hey, man. Thanks for being on the podcast. Um, Anytime, bro. Hey, do you have any f- websites? Do you have anything you want? Any plugs you want to? Just uh, IMDB, IMDB.me forward slash Devin Clark. D-E-V-I-N-C-L-A-R-K-E. If you want to hear my music, soundcloud.com forward slash Devin dash not not underscore dash. I don't do that shit dash, dash Clark so for all you uh, Hollywood casting and film out there that's uh, right he's your man Multi- I'm a multitasker bro multitasker master blaster damn straight master debater oh shit and a cunning linguist oh wow all right, y'all. This is the Ed Namrock podcast, available on iTunes and Google Play, and now in Stitch. I made it to Stitch, apparently. Um, 
So signing off with Devin Clark.